anybody that grows up as a child wants to see the Amazon. I mean, it's this giant piece of water that's just got endless opportunities. And uh, and then if you add that and you're fishing for this this thing that grows to like the size of a farm animal, up to 400 pounds, I mean, that's just a recipe for something to be spectacular. A lot of times people come and say, oh, I have been to the Amazon, I know the place, but they don't realize how huge the Amazon is and how many different environments we have inside the Amazon. The Mamirawa Reserve, it's a sustainable development reserve right in the middle of the Brazilian Amazon where the Japura River meets the Amazon River or Solimões River. It's a two million hectare area. In fact, it's one of the largest flood lands that we have in the Amazon. To go to Pirarucu is like you wanted to go back a million years to go and see what fishing's like. It's like fishing Jurassic Park. This area get flooded by six months of the year, and then when the water drops in mid-July, all the massive schools of Arapaima starts to enter the reserve, the marsh, to feed and spawn. First thing everybody hears about the jungle or the Amazon, they think that there's something that's gonna kill them, you know, immediately thinking about the crazy insects, the crocodiles, the piranha, the, all that stuff, and, and all that stuff is true. You don't want to touch the water that much, you know, you, you can get like a little fish like this, the piranha, the red belly, they can bite your finger off. The Arapaima can take up to 70% of the oxygen they need from the air, not from the water. So they row. Every 5 to 20 minutes, they come up and row. And that's where we find uh, the, the best spots to catch them. We see all lots of fish rolling, and you know that's the place to, to throw your fly. Only reason the Arapaima come up is because they don't have a middle finger. That's the only reason they do that. <laughs> Nothing can describe the, the take and the fight of a two meter Arapaima. It, it goes from a very, very calm situation to a very chaotic situation very quickly. You are, feel that you are stuck and then that log starts to move. Oh, now I touch the bottom, I'm happy. <laughs> That's a bottle of fish. <laughs> That's not the bottom. Gone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Why? Without. It is unbelievable how this fish can can gulp more than one gallon of water with bait together in less than one second. You're in the zone, you're like slowly stripping the fly, you're just slowly feeling, 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 feeling. It's almost like a vacuum. They create this thing where they just suck, <laughs> bang, suddenly, oof. and basically it's just your rod tip shakes and then you sit back on it. Yes. On the first bite, you have a really good hook set. Increase your chance a lot. Whack them, whack them as hard as you possibly can. Yeah, Same fight. Yeah, they don't, want, <laughs> don't like the hook set very much. It's a 50 liter in the pack ring already. Oh my. Oh, ah, no. It happens, man. It happens. It's happens. <laughs> Move the boat. It's crazy. Was the line, not mine, not. Happened to a Fish grande. Does that mean? Big fish. Our Pima is like hooking a, like a Volkswagen Beetle. It's like so strong. And, and, and a lot of people ask me, oh, you, you have to do with 11 weight or 12 weight. Like, it doesn't matter. They will drag the boat. It, the, the, the rod is just to cast the fly. Big fish. Kick stripper. I mean, it's, it's definitely not easy fishing. You're gonna go through some emotional, you're gonna go through some highs and you're gonna go through some lows, but, but uh, if, you, if you do what, uh, what the guides say and uh, as they say, shut up and fish, you just keep fishing and put your head down and keep going. At the end of the day, it, uh, the, the juice is worth the squeeze. It's, very, it's, a, it's a very rewarding feeling catching one of those giants. Pressure, pressure, pressure. 
we, we call it a jiu-jitsu set where you're basically putting your whole body into setting the hook in these fish with your 12 weight and your 80 pound leader and your fly line. It is a, like a freight train in your line. It's unbelievable. And they jump and they leap, they run. They sometimes they play dirty, go to, to, the, to the log structure. The, the scariest thing is, is when they start shaking their heads and you know it's a big fish and your rod just like bounces as the head just sort of moves around. And then they come up and they jump and it's like your, your heart just skips a beat. It's just suddenly this giant thing coming in the air with its mouth open and shaking its head and coming down again. The unique thing is that the guys have figured out a way to land them pretty quickly because I think if you fight them from the boat it can take a very long time. We try our best to make sure the, the clients is not like close to the head of the fish and stuff. And that's one of the reasons that we don't land the fish next to the boat. Because if he shakes the head and it gets your hand between the head and the, and the side of the boat, it's bye-bye fingers, you know, we're going to break everything. It's like, a, the head is like a hammer. And uh, once you get it close to the beach, that's 50% done. You, you can't rest and be happy and relax um, and high-five everybody. Um, then the guides do the other 50% where they wrestle this beast. The guide grabs him and then he gets absolutely wrecked. Wolves hiding nearby Whispering do or die Around me Not one single cry Can save this soul of mine From drowning As I wait, you say my last goodbye. Hey, come, 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 come. Two twenty. Two twenty. Two twenty. Number eight. I always envision Arapaima looking like a, a, a tarpon slash uh, uh, alligator garfish. You know, they look prehistoric. They look like they come from a time way before us. Gigantic, with a crazy tail, big scales, and a massive head with the eyes on top. Looks like a prehistoric fish. Most of us just want to get that eat, those jumps and the spectacular thing, and then land them and then just put them back in the water. And, and, and for that, that makes them the perfect species to fish for in the jungle. Then, then another unique thing about the Amazon, like we do find with all the other fisheries, is there's these, all these other unique species that don't really get the limelight because you've got this one trophy big game hunt fish, but you've also got all these other amazing, amazing species that, are, that you can regularly catch on a fly. We were lucky enough to, to fish for these, uh, these arowana. Arowana is so fun. Presenting the dry on the right spot, moving the fly on the right way. It's very sport fishing. Almost like an arapaima looking fish, um, but they've got these two little things on the front that they swim around and, and sort of use that to actually find bait or little bait fish that they can eat. But it's very fun to fish for them when you change down to the nine weight and you're casting these surface flies or little streamers and, and uh, you, you still have to be on point but it's, it's very cool when you see them coming behind the fly and then what they do is they almost like coil up like a snake and then you can like anticipate the bite and then he shoots forward and he grabs the fly. Good boy. It's a, it's a lot of fun fishing for them and they jump and they go crazy and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's a good break fishing for those, those, those beasts when you're fishing for those beasts and you have this visual element where you can fish for the arowana. And the other species that was so unique to target was the timbaki which is a family of the paku which is still one of my favorite fish to catch. I mean they're strong, they, they don't give up. You, you use these fruit flies and you plop, plop, plop it in the water and then they come up on the noise and they eat that. And uh, like I said, they give you a good fight for their size. Big fish. 
Yeah, somebody asking you say it's a big tembaki, okay? Fishing all these places, you have to realize you're gonna go through some hard times and you're gonna go through some amazing times where we don't catch anything for a day or, or you get this day where you've just been on fire but then you, you know at some point you're gonna have to hit the, hit the low. So, so it's amazing but don't be wrong, it's not easy. We have luck to land some real amazing fish in this week. Uh, probably one of the, our best weeks so far with more than eight fish over two meters in four days with four anglers. So that proves that Mamirawa, it's, it's unique. It's a truly special place. It's far away from everything, so it keeps the fish safe.